Have you ever wanted to go out and chase big fall smallmouth bass but didn't know where to start? In this video, I'm going to break down the basics of fall smallmouth bass fishing to give you the what, where, and when of going out and chasing these big smallmouth bass during the fall months. Let's dive into this thing. What's going on everyone? My name is Benjamin Nowak and as I mentioned in the intro, this video is all about breaking down the basics of fall smallmouth fishing. The when to go, where to go, and what to be throwing to go have success on your body's water during the fall months. So let's start with the when. When does fall smallmouth fishing really kick off? And for me, it's when that water temp hits the low 60 degree range to about 48 degrees. This is when that water temp is reaching those optimal feeding temperatures for those smallmouth, but it's also congregating that bait fish in shallow water. During the fall months, these bass are very keyed in on bait fish and very bait fish oriented. You're also going to have a bite in that shallow water on crawfish feeders, but a lot of times those crawfish will go dormant in the mid 50 degree range, which makes it very easy to know what the bass are feeding on, and that is bait. So if you locate the bait, a lot of times that's where a lot of the bass are, so it makes it relatively easy to break down where these bass are located. Another thing working in your favor about these water temps is that it's going to kill off a lot of the living grass. So all that grass that has grown up in that shallow water all season long starts to die off as that water temp falls. So you'll be left with very isolated areas to check, whether that's rock or isolated wood on the bottom or the last living grass, you can start to really break down these areas a lot more quickly because you're just going to be focused on those isolated pieces of cover in the water that are left for you guys to go fish. This is also a great time of year for those fish to be grouped up, which means these fish will be in small areas and you'll be able to catch a lot of fish at one time. Now that we've identified the when, let's start to talk about the where, because as important as it is for you to know when to be on the water, you really want to know where to be looking. And there's three main patterns that I'm going to share with you to help you quickly break down your body's water. The first pattern we're going to be talking about is locating isolated pieces of cover in the water. That could be big boulders, that could be rock ridges, it could be sand spots or pieces of wood, or as I mentioned earlier, isolated grass patches that are still living. Because all of that grass is dying off, those isolated pieces of cover are going to congregate those fish. They're going to key in on very small areas because there's not much left for them to live on. As these fish are pushing into shallow water, they're looking for that stopping point, that ambush point, that key location for them to group up and feed on bait and those isolated pieces of cover are a great place to do this. Another thing when you're looking for these pieces of cover is to look for irregularities. So if you're in this area and there's a lot of rock, look for those areas where maybe the rock sticks out a little bit further. You're around those bigger boulder rocks or differences in that rock that will help group those fish up. You're really looking for small differences that will help you maximize the bite in the area. And then the other key is that when you get a bite, stop, slow down, and really pick that area apart. Like I mentioned, this is the time of year for those fish to group up, so when you catch one, more than likely there's a bunch in the area. Pattern number two is looking at tapering points or sloping banks into the water. The reason that this is so effective is because those fish can push up onto that shallow water point feed heavily on the bait and then push back off into deep water. It also allows them a really nice access point to get into those shallow water areas to pull up on those isolated pieces of cover that we talked about in point one. So these tapering points, these long points in your lake can be a great spot to stop on during the fall months when these fish are heavily feeding. The other reason that I like this is it's very easily patternable. This is something that you can take and find across your body of water. So if they get on a specific type of point, you know, a specific slope, you can look at your map and run this pattern across your lake really effectively. So stopping and looking at those tapering points can be a really key area. The other benefit is that those fish have the ability to ambush bait on these points. As that water starts to get shallower, these bass can continually push these bait fish up onto the point, feed heavily until they're done or full, and then push back off the point. It's just a great feeding spot for these fish to live and then slide back off of as that water temperature changes and they need to drop back into deeper water. 
And pattern number three is going to be looking for river mouths and creek inflows, areas where current is flowing into your body of water. And as I mentioned, bait fish is incredibly key during this time of year, and a lot of that bait is going to be pushing up into the river, pushing around those creek inflows, and that's going to congregate the bass there as well. So locating these areas that you have water flowing in, current flowing in, or rivers flowing into your body of water can be a great stopping point for these fish to set up. It's also a great feeding spot because as that current increases, those bass can set up behind isolated pieces of cover, noted in point one, and really feed effectively on the bait as it swims by. So locating those river mouths, those creek inflows, and those areas where current is pushing into your lake, river, or body of water can be a phenomenal spot to target during these fall periods. Now let's talk about the baits that you need to go out and catch these fish. And we're going to talk about my top five baits, the simple techniques that you can use to go out and catch fish regardless of your skill level. My number one bait that I'm going to throw this time of year is going to be a crankbait. One of the benefits of a crankbait is that it does a great job of imitating bait fish and it can also do a really good job of allowing you to cover water. The big key this time of year is covering water, identifying where those bait fish are, and by fishing a crankbait, which is a bait that you can move pretty quickly through the area, you can easily cover water, get bites, and start to locate where these fish are keying in. Now all these products and my favorites are gonna be linked down in the description below so you guys can go and check these out and pick up some of these baits for yourselves. Now one of the keys with a crankbait is finding the right diving depth. And my recommendation, especially for smallmouth bass, is you don't need to be hitting bottom with your crankbait. So if you're fishing in six foot of water, I would recommend picking up a square bill style crankbait, a crankbait that dives two to five foot of water. If you're fishing deeper than that, 10 to 12 foot of water, pick up a crankbait that might dive about six to nine foot of water. There's a lot of great options out there and a lot of great colors. And don't make color selection really hard. When you're picking out colors for a crankbait, try to match what they're feeding on in your lake. If you're fishing the Great Lakes, that could be perch, it could be shiners, it could be shad. And if you're fishing inland bodies of water, it could be something as simple as shore minnows or perch, which are really prevalent up here in the north. But don't complicate color selection. Pick up colors that imitate what your fish feed on in your bodies of water. The rod that I like to throw that on is a bait casting setup. It's a TFO 7.4 medium heavy glass bass rod. When you're fishing a crankbait which has these small treble hooks, I like to use a composite rod like this Temple Fork 7.4 medium heavy. It loads deep into the blank which is going to help you land more of those fish that bite. And then the reel that I'm throwing it on is a moderate speed, six speed gear ratio reel with 14 pound test fluorocarbon line. Don't complicate the setup, cast and wind. It's a great technique to cover water with. You don't have to complicate your fishing setup when you're fishing a crankbait. Just go out there, throw it around, and you're going to get bites during the fall. Similar to a crankbait, a swim bait is another very easy approach, but does a great job of imitating bait fish in your bodies of water. What I like about fishing a swim bait is that you get bit by just about everything, whether it's bass or walleye, big bass or small bass. This is a great technique just to go out and get bites. Now what I have rigged up right now is an Excite Baits Shad Nasty, and I have it in the smoke show color. A lot of our shad get that smoky back color this time of year and uh, I just have it rigged up on a 3 8 ounce head. Again, it's a cast and wind approach. I really like just being able to cover water with this technique, and um, a swim bait does a great job of doing that. It's a great search bait, allows you to cover water, but get a lot of bites very quickly. Again, with color selection, keep it really simple. If your fish are keying in on shad, go with shad or white-based colors. If they're feeding on bluegill or perch or other shiners, I would recommend like a green pumpkin style color. It's gonna match the forage that you're fishing around. Then the rod that I like to throw this on, and you can throw it either on a spinning rod or a bait cast setup, I like the TFO 7.3 medium heavy. It's a great all-around rod. It just allows me to make long casts, get the bait away from the boat, and cover water effectively. Now aside from top water fishing, a jerk bait is probably one of my favorite bites of the year, and the fall is one of the best times for a jerk bait bite, so it's number three on my list. As opposed to a crank bait and a swim bait, which allows you to constantly cover water, a jerk bait you can cover water quickly with, but you can also soak it in an area. And most modern day jerk baits have the ability to suspend on the paws. What that means is after you pull that bait, it's actually going to sit steady in the water. So you can pause the bait and allow these fish as that water temperature falls to come up and inspect this bait. And that's when you're gonna get a lot of your bites. The reaction bite when that bait goes to pull away from them, they'll come and eat it then. 
Now rod selection on this is going to be a TFO 7 foot medium resolve rod. It's a 7 foot rod and allows me to cast this bait a long ways but that snappy tip allows me to work the jerk bait effectively. And then the reel that I'm fishing it on again is a 6 speed gear ratio reel with 12 pound test fluorocarbon line. As much as I wish it could, not everything can be power fishing during the fall and so I have a couple of finesse setups rigged up ready to go and the first one is going to be a drop shot. A drop shot is a great presentation just to soak in front of these fish's face. When you know where fish are located, it's going to be a clean up to those three prior baits. One thing with the drop shot that's also really effective is being able to really hold it on a piece of cover or an area where you know fish are living. So if you know fish are on a specific boulder or specific area of the rock pile or other areas where fish are located, you can really soak this bait there and pick it apart to get a couple extra bites. My color selection on this, this is where I'm really going to be focused on what they're feeding on. So if they're feeding on perch, I'm fishing the Xite baits. Minobi 3.3 in the clear perch color. We have a couple of other options such as Royal Minnow or Real Shad as well as a variety of other standard color options. Really match it to what those fish are feeding on. This is a presentation those fish can really get a good look at so try to match the hatch as best as possible when you're picking out colors for your drop shot. The rod I'm fishing it on is a TFO Resolve 7.1 medium light with a six speed gear ratio spinning reel, eight pound test braid to eight pound test fluorocarbon line, and that is my favorite drop shot setup. And then we'll round it out with arguably the best smallmouth catcher ever made, which is a tube. And this is just your basic three and three quarter inch tube, green pumpkin purple flake color. Super simple to fish. After you fish through there with a crankbait and a jerk bait and a swim bait, you cast this tube out there. And what it does on the fall is it has a spiral. So these fish see it, they come over to it, they nose down on it, and it catches a lot of big fish this time of year. Color selection I keep really, really simple as well. Green pumpkin, green pumpkin purple, maybe something with a little bit of white on the belly to imitate a goby, but don't get too crazy with color selection. Pick out your favorite color and the color that imitates the forage that you're fishing around and you'll have success. The spinning rod that I'm using is a brand new TFO Taction 7.4 Medium. This is a great all-around power in action, and for a tube, it's basically perfect. The reel I'm fishing it on is a 6-speed gear ratio with 10-pound test braided line to 8- or 10-pound test fluorocarbon. It's not really a finesse setup. You don't have to go super light on your fluorocarbon leader. Um, you can kind of beef it up because you're fishing it around rocks, you're fishing it around cover, and when those fish bite, you want to have that good line to help you land those fish. So a tube is number 5 on my list. So that's it. When you guys head out to the water this fall, you are equipped with everything you need to know about when, where, and how to catch smallmouth bass this year. So hopefully this helps you go out and have success on the water. Now if you guys enjoyed this video and want to see more fall fishing tips, click this video right here. And if you're not already subscribed, hit my face right there. It's going to subscribe to let you know when I post more videos just like this one. Again, all the products are going to be linked down in the description below, so go check them out to pick up baits that you need to get equipped with before you get on the water this fall. Now, thank you guys so much for watching. Take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.